Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about proportional ratios. This is something that we introduced today, uh, a word that maybe we haven't been using as much in math, but is, is very similar to the word equivalent. So I'm just going to write equivalent underneath it. Because when we have proportional ratios, what that means is we have two ratios that are, are really equivalent to each other if we were to simplify them. So to, to look at an example of this, a lot of times when we're dealing with ratios, we're dealing with real things. So for instance, if we had four cookies, and that was for one person, and we were trying to figure out, well, how many cookies would that be for two people? Okay, If we're keeping things consistent and equivalent, then we would say these ratios would be proportional. Now we can look at this and say, oh, we have one person to two people. That's an easy thing. All I have to do is multiply by two. If I do that to the denominator, I can also do that to the numerator. Four times two give us eight cookies for two people. So these are proportional ratios, four to one and eight to two. They are equivalent. If I was to simplify them, I would get the same thing. But sometimes we'll do something like this. So say we have eight cookies for two people. And I want to figure out, well, okay, well, how many would that then be for three people? Now, I can't turn two into three with an easy multiplication problem. Uh, I can't, I can't really, you know, that doesn't transfer as easily. So there's a couple methods I could do. One, I could simplify this and get a unit rate and multiply that times three. Another is I could do something that's really quick uh, and it might be kind of new, but it's pretty easy once you start for a while, and that's called cross-multiplication. So I'm going to write the word cross-multiply down here. So to cross-multiply, what we do is we take, we have two ratios that are proportional, and we're going to do simply what it says, cross-multiplying. So I would write the problem, okay, so I have 8 over 2, and then I put my equal sign, and I have an X on the right side and a 3 down below. So I'm going to make sort of these shapes that I like to draw at least when I'm first starting this, just to remember exactly which numbers I'm grouping. So I will group this 8 and the 3 together, and I'll group this 2 and the X together. I'm going across the equal sign. You can only do this when you're going across an equal sign. So I would rewrite my problem as 8 times 3 equals 2 times X. Now this is going to be true anytime you have two ratios with an equal sign in between. Same thing if you had two fractions with an equal sign in between. If they are true, if they are really proportional, this will always work. Now why does it work? We talked about that a little in class. You can look in your notes and you should be able to see the proof for that. We assigned variables to each of these places and looked at how if we multiply it will cancel things out. But basically, we go across the equal sign, multiply. Now I have 24 equals 2x, knowing that 2x is the same thing as 2 times x. And then we divide to solve it. So I have x equals 12. I divided by 2 because I looked outside with the variable, multiplied by 2, opposite of dividing by 2. Whenever you're cross-multiplying, you will almost always be dividing afterwards. Okay, so you cross-multiply and then divide by whatever is being multiplied by the variable. So that means for three people, to make a proportional ratio, I would have 12 cookies. So I would simply put a 12 cookies up here. Okay. That was my answer. Now, a lot of times, it will also just get a math problem to do this kind of thing. So I'm just going to separate off in this corner right here. So let's say we had something like 7 over 4 equals x over 6. Now, I can't turn 4 into 6 easily with multiplication. It's not one of the math facts that I know. So I can cross-multiply, and this will actually be pretty fast. Numerator times the denominator across 7 times 6 equals 4 times x, or 42 equals 4x. So I cross-multiplied, and then you divide. So I have to divide each side by 4 to solve for x. I will have to do some long division here. Four, so we have 1 times minus 4 gives me 0. Bring down the 2. 4 can't go into 2. Remember when 
you do that, you have to put your zero up top, add a decimal point, and bring another zero down. Okay, as we do minus zero equals two, so then a zero goes all the way down. Sorry, it's a little sloppy. And four goes into 25 times, then my decimal point goes straight up, so I can see that x is going to equal 10.5. That would be my answer for this. I cross multiply. 7 times 6 equals 4 times x. I evaluated any multiplication I had to do, and then I divided each side by 4. So that's how we can solve proportional equations and find the missing variables. We can just multiply, that's a fast way to do it, or we can always cross multiply to solve as well.